It's a great day to be in Christ. Amen. Amen. Why don't you greet about three or four people today and say you're blessed to get to set by me. Let's lift up our voice today in prayer and then let's just enter into worship today. How many has just come to bless the Lord this morning? Amen. Right. Well, that's about half of you. That's pretty good. All right. And so, but we're just going to bless the Lord today, right? Lift up the name of Jesus, glorify him. That's what we come to do today is to exalt his name. And I've said it many times, but let me just remind you again today. This is the only part of our service that God will get anything out of today. He is the word. There won't be anything I do that says, oh, I never thought of that. There's nothing I'll say in the word that will say, oh, that's, you know, I don't know about that. He knows the word. He is the word. Amen. And so he won't receive anything from the word. The word is for our benefit. But our worship is unto God. Our worship is unto him. And so as we lift him up and as we glorify him today, let's do it with the fruit of our lips. Let's magnify him. Let's give him our very best. Amen. And let the world know that he is alive and that he is well. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, receive our praise today from the fruit of our lips as we glorify you and bless you today. We just pray in this place as we enter into worship now that you will be glorified and you will be praised. And we thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together. Amen.
love you, Lord, how great is how great is how Man, put your hands together today. Hey, I'll tell you what, if, if you missed Wednesday night, Bishop started the series Wednesday night. And man, I love that song, and I've been thinking about it all week. Let me read some scripture to you real quickly that Bishop uh, spoke on Wednesday. If you, if you didn't uh, show up on Wednesday night or haven't heard the series that he uh, did on Wednesday, go to our website, hurricanechurch.com. Man, you got to download it and get that stuff in your heart. Amen. Amen. Hey, he's still pastoring us on Wednesdays, right? <laughs> so go to that website and man get that in your heart listen to this it says so Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh <laughs> only place in the Bible Bishop pointed out that God has ever called Jehovah Jireh is right here and it says and he said to this day on the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said I have sworn by myself says the Lord that since you have done this and have not withheld from me or begrudged giving me your son, your only son, I am, in blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens and the sands of the seashore. And your seed there will possess the gate of his enemies. Hey, listen, I'll tell you why it's awesome though. See, we get all excited about reading that, but I'll tell you why it's awesome. Because Bishop pointed out to us Wednesday, it's the only place that God ever was called Jehovah Jireh. Not because he gave us money. Come on, somebody. Not because he gave us healing. Man, this has ministered to me this week. Man, it's, it's bringing revival in Jim Titan's life this week. Not because he healed me of all my diseases. Not because he was nice to me. Not because he gave me a good wife and a good family. But because he provided for us a lamb that was caught in the thicket. And in the Lamb, we've got everything that we need. Amen. Listen, we come here today to worship Jesus. Man, you don't need, a, you don't need one more motivational speech. You don't need one more person's handshake. You don't need one more hug. You need the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. He's your answer today. Someone give Jesus a hand clap of praise in this place this morning. Amen. Name above all names. Name above all names. Amen. Hey, well, listen, next week is Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a great time of year. Next week, we got some special things planned. Um, First Lady Renee, they're having a, a Mother's Day banquet next week. And if uh, you want to sign up for that, you can sign up out in the atrium. And uh, today is the last day to sign up for that. So if you got any questions or anything, see First Lady Renee or, or check with someone out in the atrium. Um, also, continue to get your Mother's Day pictures into our First Lady. Uh, if you got any pictures of you and your, your daughters or sons or children or some with your mother, she's uh, putting something special together for that. So get that into her as well. And also next week, we're going to have a baby dedication service. Amen. So if, uh, we need information for that. If, if you're going to want your children uh, dedicated to the Lord, um, you, can see, uh, you can see our First Lady on that as well. Um, we've got to have that information about your, uh, about your family. But amen, are you ready to give today? Man, I love giving. I love giving here because I know when I give into good ground, God multiplies it. He, he, he doesn't double it or triple it. Man, He multiplies it. Can, let me say something to you real quickly. This is 15 seconds. i got to show you something, man, because this is, this is messed up and crazy, okay? So I go out yesterday, and I've been going, and uh, uh, I was wanting to grill out, right? I know this sounds silly, but just, just listen. I was going to grill out. And I go out there to check it yesterday morning, and my, I'm empty. I got one of those little gauges that tell you how much gas you got in your propane tank and everything. And I went out there, and I said, man, I can't believe that thing's empty. I don't want to take it apart and everything. And so I went out there, and, and we went all day, and Melinda was yard selling, selling stuff all day yesterday. And I went out to get that tank yesterday evening. I was going to go get it refilled. And uh, I went out there, and, and that gauge that was on the red that was on empty was now full. God gave me propane in my gas grill. Hey, come on, somebody. He cares about me. He multiplies in every area of my life. Hey, I got to grill out for free. Amen. <laughs> 
Hey, God's good. God's good. I love giving in a place where we believe God. God's taught in his truth. Things multiply in every area of our lives. Amen. So are we ready to give today? Amen. Let's say our confession this morning like we mean it. Can we get our confession up? All right. Say it together like we mean it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence thanking you for the tabernacle of praise. You have called us to take the gospel to this region and to the nations of the world. We are a growing body of believers and there is no division among us. Our church is prospering financially and we have more than enough to meet every situation. We are doers of the word and not hearers only. We lift our hands and worship you with these gifts. As we give in the offering today, we are thanking you for jobs or better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. It is offering time and we are thankful we have this opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we do love you and thank you today. God, take this offering, receive it, multiply it. Father, bless your people with it. Thank you for this opportunity to give into the kingdom. Thank you that we're going to see a harvest of souls saved and lives changed for your glory from the tabernacle of praise starting here and spreading around the world. We thank you for it in Jesus' name and amen. Continue worshiping this morning. Amen.
filled with wonder this morning? I'm filled with wonder. Yes, awestruck wonder. Is that the mention of your name? Tell them, Jesus, your name. Is Jesus your name? awesome, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, worship team, Amen. for leading us into the presence of the Lord today. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on today. Looking forward to what God does today. It's going to be exciting next week. Um, and uh, just on Mother's Day, and I appreciate all of our women and going to have a great time of fellowship there. Ladies' night out, Mother's night out, and uh, so be sure to sign up, take a part, be a part of that, but get involved in that, and uh, just uh, get to know. Some a lot of times 
you know, as a growing church, we don't always know everybody that's here, right? But it's in these small times, small groups that we're able to get to know each other better. So take advantage of that. Be a part of that. And uh, we can always do more together, right? Amen. And so uh, we appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to uh, my lovely wife going to be preaching next Sunday morning. And uh, so she's going to bring the word, and you're going to not want to miss that. Uh, as Brother Jimmy said, yeah. as Brother Jimmy said, we had started a new series on Wednesday night entitled in this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I, we, we don't just come to church around here just to take up time. I preach on Wednesday nights. Amen. I share the word. And so if you can't make it, be sure to get online. But it, nothing takes the place of being here, right? But if you can't make it, sure enough, get in there, get the word. We make all of that free for you. We pay for everything. Uh, you have the, the uh, app on your phone that you can get it, the internet, all of those things. Uh, if you don't have it on the app, uh, you can see uh, Sister Shannon afterwards. But I believe you go to church at link app.com and put in our zip code 25510 or Tabernacle of Praise and it will bring that up and set that on your phone and you can get all of the messages there you can get my notes from the me uh, messages that I preach all of that is free just to help you to be able to build the kingdom of God because that's what we're here for right amen, amen. is to build the kingdom of God and uh, I say it's free it's your money that pays for it and that's the reason we don't charge for it Amen. You give so that we can do this ministry. And so we make it available to you, and we're thankful for that. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, Pastor Jimmy already preached my introduction, so it'll only be about 15 minutes today. No, it's good that somebody listens to you, right? <laughs> yeah, somebody hears what you say. But we did start this series on Wednesday night, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we said on Wednesday night that everything we ask in prayer, we ask of the Father because the Father is the one who has the will for our life, right? And uh, we ask the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the way. And then we ask that all things be done by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is now the manifest presence of God that is upon the earth. Amen. And so we started this on Wednesday and we said on Wednesday we started speaking about Father. And Father is uh, uh, four things that we looked at. First of all, He is a promise keeper. Now, your, your earthly father, you, you have one. You may know him. You may not know him. He may be good. He may be a scoundrel. But your heavenly father, I said your heavenly father, is not only a promise maker, but he is a promise keeper. Amen. He is a promise keeper. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 13, for when God made a made a promise to Abraham because he could not swear by no greater he swore by himself there is none greater than father God and then he is our protector in Psalms chapter 3 in verse number 1 he said Lord how they have increased with trouble that trouble me many are they who rise up against me many are they who say to me there is no help for him in God have you ever told you that God can't even fix this but look what David said but you O Lord are my are my shield and the glory and the lifter of my head amen he said this is what men are saying but then he said, this is what I know. Uh, men say, you, can, you, you can't even help me. Men say, it's too great, it's too difficult. It, it, they say, there is no hope at all. But this is what I know, David says. You, O oh Lord, are my shield. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. How many know he can lift your head today? And then the third thing that my father is, is my father is a planner. 
In Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, For I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Right? He, he has a plan for you, but you have to walk out that plan. Right? And then the, third, the fourth thing that we stopped at Wednesday night was this, and this is where we'll pick up this morning, is that Father God is my provider. In Genesis 22 and verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, or Jehovah Jireh. Amen. As it is said this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And we said on Wednesday that in Genesis 22 and verse 14 here is the only place that God refers to himself as Jehovah Jireh as provider and so we have to ask ourselves the question if this is the only place that father god would allow himself to be called jehovah jireh what is it that he provided that he would only say here that i am your provider he doesn't say it anywhere in scripture when he talks about salvation he talks about healing he talks about all the great things that he has provided but he says it this one time of, of, of himself and no other place can it be found amen and it describes him this one time that he is not jehovah jireh because he provided us money He's not Jehovah Jireh because he provided a house or a car or paid our bills. That would cheapen the blood of Jesus. Amen. That would cheapen, amen, what God has done for us, what he has provided for us. But he is called Jehovah Jireh because he has provided a lamb. Amen. Amen. And the one thing that he provided for Abraham was everything that he needed. Amen. He needed a sacrifice, but God provided a lamb. And in that lamb met the need of Abraham. And so I want to tell you that our father provided everything that we need when he provided a lamb for you and I. He provided that lamb and put it upon a cross. And upon that cross that day when that lamb was provided, he, he provided for us everything that we would ever need in life. And that's the reason why I'm so thankful for the lamb today. I said I'm thankful for the lamb today. We do not thank God and call him our provider because he provided healing, provided deliverance, or provided joy. We call him Jehovah because 2000 and Jireh, because 2013 years ago, he provided a lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world, and in that lamb is deliverance. In that lamb is salvation. In that lamb is provision. In that lamb is everything thing that I will ever need in my life amen and so what I need to do is embrace the lamb amen we go around wasting our time looking for all of these other things wondering why they're not happening in our life but we just need to fall in love with the lamb amen and if you fall in love with the lamb then when you get the lamb you get everything you need because when you get the lamb you get salvation when you get the lamb, you get deliverance. When you get the lamb, you get healing. When you get the lamb, you get provision. When you get the lamb, you get everything that pertaineth unto life and godliness. Amen? And so today we need to embrace the lamb. What is the lamb? The lamb is Jesus. And that's who I want to talk about today is the son. Jesus is your access and authorization to everything you need but can never earn or deserve. Let me say that again. Jesus is the act, your access and authorization to everything that you need but can never earn it or deserve it. Jesus is the door the access 
He is the door. He is the entry to everything that you will need. You, you might need peace, but he's the door to peace. If you want to get peace, if you want to get joy, then you've got to go through the door. If you want rest, then you've got to go through the door. If you need a new attitude, you've got to go through the door, amen, of that person, Jesus Christ. And everything that you need, salvation, healing, deliverance, freedom, Jesus is your access to everything that you need. And so Jesus is the way that we enter into everything that God has reserved for us according to his will. Aren't you glad God has a will for you? He has a plan for your life. Not only is Jesus our access, but he's our authorization. There have been a couple of times whenever I've been asked to, I, you know, it ain't on a regular basis, but I can remember a couple of times when I've been asked to a special event. And it was a private event and not everybody could attend. It was just by invitation only. And when you said, yes, I'll be there, they'd send me a VIP card. Amen. Now that makes you feel good, right? Got a VIP card. And I remember uh, one, on one occasion, I was asked, my friend asked me to meet him in the back, on the backstage, and there was very, a lot of prominent people there. And uh, so I said, sure, and I made my way uh, back toward the stage. And whenever I got there, I found a security man that was standing there that stopped me and said, you're not allowed in here. And I said, I, I, I believe I am. And he said, no, you're not. And, I, and so I reached in my pocket and I got out my VIP card. And he said, I'm sorry, sir, go right ahead. It gave me access into somewhere that I normally would not have been able to go. Are you walking with me? And there are things that God has reserved, preserved for you, for your life in his will for you that you cannot get them except through your, the Son, Jesus Christ. He is your VIP card, if you will. Where you cannot go on your own, Jesus can get you there. Amen. Where, what you th think that you're not able to accomplish, the things that you don't have authorization for, He is your authorization that you might be able to obtain those things. Amen. Some people live their life like God only gives us a VIP pass once a year and then, we, you know, if we're sick or we're in trouble, we can use the VIP pass. But some act like that it, 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 they're not good enough. Others think, well, they have to praise hard enough or maybe they get a one-day pass into the provision and the blessing of Father God. But Jesus is not is uh, not only your access, but he is your authorization, and he does not give you a one-day pass. He authorized it over 2,000 years ago, and he said, because of the blood, I am giving you a VIP card. I'm giving you a pass. When you come through me, you can have access to everything that Father God has provided for you. Amen. And because of Jesus Christ, amen, we're able to go where we've not been able to go. We're able to do what we've not been able to do. And we have access. He is our authorization. Amen. And whenever you have that name, it authorizes you to go places you're not normally able to go. Amen. In your flesh, you're only able to go so far. In the natural, you're only able to do so much. But whenever you have that authorization that in the name of Jesus, amen, the name of Jesus will give you access and the limitations and the hindrances and the walls that have been built up in the natural have to come down because Jesus has given you that access. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus died, the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Amen. And he gave you access to the will of God anytime you need it. Amen. We come to church, we worship together, 
we celebrate God together. He said, For, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. We are come together, amen, for a spiritual experience with God together, amen, and, and experience Him on a greater level corporately than we do individually. But here's the truth. We don't we we have that access, we have that availability every single day of our lives. If you're not accessing him, if you're not going into the holies of holies every day, you're cheating yourself. Father God paid an awesome price so that you could go into the holies of holies, so that you could talk to him, so you could communicate with him, so you could speak to him, and that he would move on your behalf. Amen. He has given you authority to access the will of God. And through Christ, I have access and authority to everything that I need. It's not about me. Too many folks today has made it about them. Well, if I pray enough, if I fast long enough, if I go to church enough, and it base it upon your doings, and not what Jesus has done. Should you pray? Yes. Should you fast? Yes. Should you go to church? Yes. All of those things are good. But my ex uh, access and authorization is not based upon me deserving the goodness of God. It is based upon what Jesus has already done for me. Amen. That gives me access. And so, yes, I might have fallen short of his glory. Yes, things may have not, I may have um, not done the things right that I should have done. And here comes the enemy and tells you, you're not deserving. You don't deserve it. You, you, you shouldn't even talk to God about that because, you know, you haven't done enough of this. That, uh, but the devil is a liar. Amen. Yes, you should have, but you didn't. But we didn't get anything because we dirt deserved it. None of us are here today because we deserve it. Deserved it. All of the all of our greatness could be put together, and the Bible said it still comes up as filthy rags in the sight of God. Amen. But what Jesus did gave me authorization and gave me access to the very throne room of Father God. And whatever I have need of, I can go there expecting that He will do it for me. The reality is nobody deserves to be saved. Nobody deserves to be healed. Nobody deserves to be, live a free life. Nobody deserves to, to, for the power of God and his ability to be rest upon your life. But thanks to Jesus, whom is my provision, who is my access, who is my authorization, Amen. I have now that ability to access the very power and presence of God in my life. Amen. The blessings we receive in life have not come because we earned it. We got it because he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. Amen. Not only is Jesus your provision, he is the price that purchased your provision. Now, I'm not much of a shopper, but I thought I would try this on just to help us relate here today. Uh, you know, whenever I go shopping, much different than my lovely wife, uh, I don't go in and look at everything. Love you, honey. I have a list of what I want. I go get what I want. If they don't got what I want, I get out. And I go to another store. Right? The men help me. It's a man-woman thing, I know. But... I don't see no sense in looking at everything if you ain't got the money to be buying it. I mean, you know, there are things that I'd like to have up in that store. It's not that there isn't anything in there I don't like or wouldn't want. 
It's just that I don't have the ability to purchase it at the time, so there ain't no use of looking at it. Huh? I mean, you know, I know you can get out the cards, right? But I've tried it that way, and I don't like it. <laughs> Try to live within our means. It's not that all that stuff is bad. It's just that you have before, you, you can go in there and fill up your cart, get you two carts, and fill them slap full of all kinds of great things. But I want to promise you something. You ain't getting out of that store without paying for it, baby. Somebody's got to pay for it. I said somebody has to pay for it. And that's the provision of God. God has not only provided for us through Jesus Christ, but he's also paid for the provision. Amen. In other words, he, he said he loads us down daily with his benefits. He provides for us, but he not only provided and said, this is what you need. He said, I'm going to pay for what you need. And he did that through his son, Jesus Christ. He paid for it in full. Amen. Provision is not free. Provision comes with a price. And, if, and, and we, when we look at this and we envision that, we understand that that's what Jesus did. He, if you could imagine your spiritual self going into that place of looking for whatever you need and knowing that when you get to the checkout counter, you, you don't have to worry about, do I have enough to pay for it? You know that Jesus has got it. He's already paid for it. He's already supplied the need, praise God. And so when we go into that, different than going into the store, we don't worry about how are we going to get out of here by paying for this. We know that it's already been provided for, already been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus purchased every blessing and every promise that belongs to you. Not only did Jesus purchase you, he purchased everything and every promise that belongs to you. I've never forgotten the day that Jesus came to where I was and my life was changed forever. When I asked him to be my Savior and my Lord, I remember the time that he filled me with his gift of the Holy Spirit. We all have different stories of how we came to Christ, but there is one thing that remains the same that is a constant in everyone's story, and that is we came to Christ because there was a faith that rose up on the inside of us that we believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and we had a revelation that Jesus has purchased my salvation. Amen. And with that faith and that revelation that Jesus is the Son of God and that He has paid for my salvation, we come to Him and He redeems us from our sin. He redeems us from our past. It doesn't matter how good or how bad you have been. We all come to Jesus and He gives us a clean slate. And He says He cast our sins as far as the east is from the west, never to to be remembered against us any longer and so it doesn't matter how good or how bad you have been he has paid the price that we can be saved and forgiven Amen. now if I was to tell you that are here today that have accept, made a relationship and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, if I was to tell you that you are not going to heaven, most of you I couldn't talk out of it. Or I shouldn't be able to. I thought I'd get a better amen than that. Maybe I'm wrong. But I shouldn't be able to talk you out of your relationship because it is a personal thing between you and God and you, you know what happened that time, that moment that you called upon the name of the Lord. Amen? And so most folks you can't talk out of 
the relationship that they have with Christ and what Christ did for them on, at Calvary. And yet those same people you can talk out of their healing. You can talk them out of their promotion. You can talk them out of the other provision that God has given us through Jesus Christ. Now how is it that, that we can so quickly embrace salvation but we don't embrace the other provisions that God has given for us? Amen. You never received an email that told you, congratulations, you got saved today. So how do you know you're saved? You're saved by faith. It is by faith that you know that you're a child of God. It is by faith that you know that Jesus purchased you. Amen. It takes faith to believe that, that Jesus in a moment can come and take that filthy dark heart and because of the blood that he shed, he can make it white as snow. It takes faith to believe that when you take your last breath here, you will spend eternity with him there. Amen. Amen. If you have that kind of faith, how is it that you're tripping over God healing you now? How is it that you're tripping out over him supplying and meeting a need in your life? Amen. God can bring, how can God do this? He can do this the same way that he provided your salvation for you. He provided healing for you. He provided deliverance for you. He provided joy for you. He supplied all of your needs according to his riches in glory by. And so everything has been provided for. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good news. He's provided everything for you. Hallelujah. If he purchased you, he purchased every promise that belongs to you, then we have to also understand that salvation is a garment. And within this garment, there is healing. Within this garment, there is deliverance. When I put on the robe of salvation, within this garment, there is freedom, there is joy, there is peace, there is power, there is prosperity. Amen. And you cannot put on the garment of salvation without wrapping yourself up in the provision, the power, and everything that God has blessed you with. Because when you receive his son, you receive everything that he provided for you. Oh, I wish somebody get happy about that today. He has clothed you in a garment of righteousness. He has clothed you in a garment of salvation. And your life is wrapped up not only in his salvation, but his freedom, his healing, and his deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. And it all came through the name of Jesus. Before you leave here today, I just want to remind you that your enemy, that God has, the Bible said God has given him a name, which is above every name. And your enemy will flee, not at the name of Muhammad, not at the shrine of Islam, not at the name of Buddha. Hell laughs at it. Hell mocks it. But at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. And I've heard said it before and I'll say it over and over. Amen. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. This society that we live in and this culture that we live in. They're not afraid to put up the, uh, a shrine for Islam in their school. They're not afraid to put up a Buddha in their school. But right here in our own little community, they're scared to death of a, a picture of a Jesus that don't even look like him. It's what he, it represents. Come on, somebody. Because there really is power in the name of Jesus. 
at the name of Jesus, principalities have to back up. Hell has to shut up. And there is a revelation that Jesus really is Lord. And that's the reason why that this nation is so afraid of Jesus. Because it isn't just some kind of good little feel-good thing. It isn't just another religion that you can put on a shelf somewhere or you can go bow down to and go through your rituals and traditions. But whenever people start mentioning the name of Jesus, atmospheres start changing. At the name of Jesus, we begin to expect things that other people will not expect. At the name of Jesus, we see lives changed. Amen. At the name of Jesus, I've seen drug addicts set free in a moment's time. At the name of Jesus, drug addiction, alcohol, and perversion has to come off of people's lives. At the name of Jesus, I've seen the blind eyes open, the lame leap for joy, amen, and cancer has to die at the name of Jesus. Why? Because there's power in the name. Ephesians 1 and 19 said, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of the mighty power which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in the, this age, but also in that age which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him who filled all in all. Amen. Where are we? What does this mean to us? Well, we have taken on Christ. And so if we have taken on Christ, then we are to be what this scripture says. We are to be the head and not the tail. We are to have power over principalities, powers, darkness, dominion over every other name. Amen? Because he has given it to us. Now, you say, well, how do you come up with that, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked because of the word. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And now Jesus has gone back, give him a seat at the right hand of Father God, and now you and I are his representors in the earth. And we have put on Christ. We are clothed with Christ. And what are we to be doing here on the earth? Hold the fort till he comes. I'm climbing up the backside of the mountain, trying somehow to make it in. No, we are to take authority and dominion in the name of Jesus. We are to re be representors of him in the earth. Amen. Not holding the fort, not holding on, not barely climbing up the backside of some mountain, not some old wretched worm. I'm the righteousness of Christ. I have put on the robe of Christ. I have put Christ on. I have put the anointing on. Oh, come on. You're going to mess with me, and I'm going to have to preach here today. Amen. We put on that anointing. Christ means the anointed one. Amen. And we put that anointing on that Christ did, and we're not a second cousin. We're not in a second a power or a lesser anointing. But the same anointing that Jesus had on him is the same anointing that's on you and I that are walking now in Christ Jesus. And we get it through the Son. God did, did this for us through Jesus. 
and now we have put on Christ and he has raised us up together and seated us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now that you're seated with him and you have put him on then we carry out the work of God in the earth in the name of Jesus amen this is powerful because if you remember I told you last week that you can't change anything until your attitude changes and as long as, as you believe you're an old wretched worm then all you'll do is wiggle around eating dust amen as long as you believe that I am not deserving and I, sh I shouldn't have it and I can't do it and, and I, yeah you're going to be right but you have to have a mind change. Be not conformed unto this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your suke, your mind, your will, and your emotions so that you understand that this isn't about me. Yes, you're right, I could not do it on my own. But because of what Jesus has done for me, amen, now I have access and authority into the place of Jesus. I have put him on. I'm seated in a heavenly place with him. And now I'm going to do his work in the earth. I'm going to save the lost, heal the sick, raise the dead, set the captive free, bring peace and joy and deliverance all in the name of Jesus he said let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God uh oh what was the mind of Jesus? To be equal. To operate in this same power, this same anointing, this same authority. But now let's back up. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What is the mind of Jesus? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This is a mindset that we must have. That we're not a wretched worm. That we're not undeserving or less than. But we have put on Christ. And we are representing him in the earth. Amen. You see, we are representors. We are ambassadors for him. And when you go to a third world country, we, America has ambassadors there. Right? And those ambassadors are not uh, committed to the same laws that that country is run by. They operate under American law. Amen. And you can go there and the ambassador will, will maybe have a wreck and it be his fault, but it's not his fault. Because he is operating in a different law. He is there representing America. Amen. And I want to tell you today that God has put us here to represent him in the earth. Amen. As we have put on Jesus Christ, now we have to have a different mindset. We have to have the mind of Christ. Amen. And so we go and we do what Jesus would do. If we see a sick person, we say, what would Jesus do about this? Amen. If we see someone bound, we would say, what would Jesus do about this? That's the reason why Peter and John walked in such authority. They weren't there doing what they thought was a good idea. You remember when they walked up to the temple that day and the Bible said it was about the hour of prayer and Peter and John came by and seen this man who was lame there and he thought what he needed was money but what he really needed was a lamb. Amen. And they said to him, silver and gold we do not have. But I want to give you what we do have. And what did they do? They didn't say in the name of Peter, in the name of Paul. They said in the name of Jesus Christ, arise. And that's what we have to do. 
I know some people have got crazy with it and they go and they say, well, I'm going to take this car in the name of Jesus and, and, you know, and, and what they need to do is just slap them and say, here, take this book with you too. Somebody got to pay for it. Right? But I'm talking about what would Jesus do? What situation, what would he do? What would he do if he seen this situation? That's what Peter and John did. And they went and imposed the kingdom of God in that situation. And I declare to you today that Jesus has not left us here so we could be drugged through all the sin and the iniquity and the perversion that has come upon this earth. But he has left us here to be a light in a dark place to pose the kingdom of God upon the earth and say kingdom of God come, will of God be done in the earth as it is in the heavens. Now watch this, I'm almost done. You got to get this. Because if we don't get this, we'll miss the whole thing. In his spirit, Jesus' spirit and soul, he was strong and bold. In his spirit, in his mind, his will, in his emotions, he was bold as a lion. But in his body, his actions, he was humble. He considered not it to be robbery, to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking on the form of a bondservant. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of heaven and of those on the earth and those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. At the mention of his name every knee bows and every tongue confesses. It's the power of the name. Because there's authority. You know, every once in a while you'll be going down the road and there'll be an issue or a situation and, and you have this little police officer standing out there and he's about five foot two and he's got all of his duds on and got his hat on and got a badge on and, you know, got a whistle and he stops you. And I'm thinking, I could run you over. I could make mush of you. It's not that I don't have the ability, but I understand the authority. And I understand I may run him over, make mush of him, but the authority that he represents has a lot more of him and ain't all five foot two. Huh? And whenever we go on down the road of life and the enemy tries to put up roadblocks and stops and hindrances in our life, but you just say, wait a minute, and just show him the VIP card. Show him the badge. Tell him I have authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not here by myself. I know I'm only five foot ten. Amen. But I want to tell you that I'm not here by myself. I've got some special agents with me. I've got God the Father for me. I've got the Holy Ghost in me. I've got angels all around me. And I've got the backup of all of heaven. And it's a divine authority on my side. And so whenever I show up, I'm not showing up by myself. I wish I had somebody knew it today. Every once in a while, we got good kids, but every once in a while, our kids that get to acting up, and they don't respond to Renee like they should. And whenever she's had enough, I'll hear her say, you want me to get your daddy? And I don't even have to get out of my seat. Just the mention of my name brings order to the situation. That ain't always been that way. But it's that way now because we've had some encounters before. And they understand that if daddy has to get up out of his chair, it ain't going to be pretty. The enemy has some, had some encounters with Jesus. 
and it's never been pretty. He's never lost a battle. Come on. He's never lost a situation. I know we, you know, us preachers, we preach the Calvary and we talk about the cross. And I, I, I may have even said it, I'm not sure, but I may have even said it myself. But I've heard them illustrate the cross of, of two prize fighters fighting the fight and warring. And it was an 18 round war and bloody and battle and beaten. But I want to tell you, it wasn't a struggle, it wasn't a beat down. Amen. Jesus won that battle in the garden. And I know a lot of folk wear crosses and that's all well and good, but I'm here today to tell you the victory wasn't won on the cross, it was won in the garden. Amen. And whenever he submitted to the will of the Father, the price was paid and victory came. And so that's the reason why he could go into public ministry so easy and so freely that even when they mocked him and ridiculed him, he would not say a word because the battle, I'm telling you today, when you know who you are in times of prayer, when you seek the face of the Father, when public times come, you will not have a struggle, but you will know that you're walking in the authority of the name of Jesus and you will declare it with authority and with victory what I'm trying to say is Jesus has already had an encounter with sickness and one he's already had an encounter with poverty and bondage and one the enemy knows that there is no way that he can stand up when Jesus shows up so just at the mention of his name, sickness has to go. Depression has to buckle at his knee at the name of Jesus Christ. And so today we need to understand this and know the power that is in the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and they are safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason the disciples were able to use the name of Jesus and it worked for them is because they had a personal relationship with him. They were not doing what they wanted to do in their name. They were doing representing his name in the earth and they were doing what would have been done if he were still there. And I just want to say today that the Son has provided everything that you need. And He's given us access and authority to it all. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom we, He foreknew, He also predestined. Now, a lot of people get this predestined messed up, and they say, well, the some people are going to go to heaven and some aren't and ain't nothing you can do about it that's, that's against everything in the scripture he also predestined to what to be conformed to the image of his son that's what you're predestined for that we might be the firstborn among many brethren God wants you so desperately to take on the nature of Christ, to live a victorious life, that he sent his son and paid for the provision so that you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. Not somewhere in heaven, thank God for heaven, but right here on the earth, he wants you to live in victory today. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet today and give him a praise for his word. If it wasn't for the Father, if it wasn't for the Son, none of us would be here today. There would be no hope for our tomorrow. But thank God He did. Thank God He came. Thank God He paid the price. Thank God He gave us access and authority to see it all come to pass in our lives. If you're here today and you don't know this Jesus, if you don't know Christ, if you don't know his son and have a personal relationship with him, I invite you today to come. 
let us pray with you. He loves you so much that he did everything he could do so that you could have this life, this abundant life. If you're here today and, and you need the Holy Spirit has just touched you in some areas as we've been preaching today. And you say, there, I, I need that. I just want to receive that access or maybe it's the provision. Maybe it's just that I want to walk in that authority that God has provided through his son. Whatever it is, God, I want to get away from that low life living mentality. And I want to quit thinking as a wretched beggar, but I want to think with the righteousness of God. I want to have the mind of God. Hallelujah. And as we take that on, our lives change. We see things in a different perspective. Father, I've done my best to share the word today as I feel you've given it to us for this moment, this season. Now I pray that you would bless each and every individual that is here. God, I don't know where they may be. I don't know where they may be in their walking with you. Or God, somebody may be needing access. Somebody may be feeling, God, less than. Someone may know, not know you, God, in that personal relationship. But I want to thank you that you paid the price that everybody could know you and the freedom and the salvation. Now, as we're here this morning, I pray that you have, Holy Spirit, that you have touched the hearts and you've ministered as though you desire to today. And let us be empowered by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you today in this message. Or as I said, you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. I want to encourage you to come today. And let's pray together. we got prayer partners here that want to pray with you. Believe that your life can be empowered and ministered to this morning. And so as we get ready and sing now, won't you come today? Let's pray together. Thank you. 